Hello and warm welcome to New Generation Woman. Today in my Soul Story series, I like to share another story that underlines a shift from fear to courage. I read it out loud. It was a post that I posted, I think, a month ago when people have been seemingly touched and gave me strong feedback. So I thought, why not sharing this on this channel? Because I do believe, as you know, in the healing power of stories. And this is one of them that might do or help something in your life, um, some pain, some fear to release that. A headshot, perfect photographer, perfect makeup, artist, perfect light and perfect smile, perfect life. My body is everything but perfect. 24 years ago, as my media career was taking off, a serious accident robbed me from my on air and stage dreams. Since the bike accident, my body is in pain. Some days more and some days less. 24 years of pain. 24 years. The time, energy and money I've invested in finding cure would cover the budget of a great house and a Porsche too. A few months after the accident, I left to stay for three months in a Buddhist center, Lake District, England. It is a miracle, my doctors had told me before. I left on my quest for healing. I had fallen flat on my face. Not much was left from what you see now on the perfect photos. Four weeks later, my face was almost back to normal. It had just healed by itself. A miracle, you would say. They had done their job, not more they could do. That was what doctors told me. And you must think, Gosh, you must have been so grateful, Janine. No, I was not grateful at all. I was in panic. I knew something big is happening. The start of a whole new journey far beyond of what I had planned for myself as I was never ever spiritual. I was not a Buddhist and I never had heard about clairvoyance at all. And now I was facing Buddhism, spirituality, and I was sitting in front of a clairvoyant who told me, don't let the pain stop you from what you want to do. He's a psychic and he was very gentle, but I didn't want to hear that. I was just you know, doing everything I could to go to television. And now I was shattered. I had a few accidents, other accidents before. I knew something big was happening. And I was sitting suddenly, almost felt from overnight, in a Buddhist center in England, where everybody said, it's a miracle how easy you connected, how easy you got one of the nicest rooms. You could even paint the room with some craftsmen in from, from the guru. And I was not interested in the guru. I didn't even have any authority topics. I didn't even believe in gurus. But here I was sitting with a lot of fear. I mean, I was just in panic because I knew instinctively, if you're not looking at this, it, the next accident might not be such a miracle. Now, my face was healed, but my body was not healed and definitely not my psyche. So all the pain that was in my body was also in my mind. And all that was happened before was back on the surface. So now I really needed to dig deep. And it comes to unwanted times. It comes never to a planned time. Oh, dear God, this would be a good time to face that shit. Now it mostly comes in times when you absolutely don't expect it. And when you absolutely don't want, you never want to face shit. Sorry to say it's so strong. Um, so when I heard the psychic telling me, don't let the pain stop you, you might have to live for the whole rest of your life with it. I was devastated. I mean, I was, I felt like somebody is pulling the trigger and opening the earth with a black big hole and I'm just dropping right into it. Hopeless, desperately hopeless. A few years later, still in pain, I had a dream. Go back to dancing. Ridiculous, I thought, half asleep, 4 a.m. I could barely walk. I saw another healer instead. He was fun. A former athlete who had found his way back to life and after he had experienced a similar story, I trusted him. We laughed, shared, forgot about my treatment and then he said, let's meet for salsa tonight. It was ice cold at that time. Bavaria, snow, minus temperature. I came with boots, a wool skirt, reaching my ankles, a turtleneck sweater, my hair pulled back and I looked like a complete idiot amongst the hot, dressed, sweaty, 
juicy, sexy women. He just was showing me the basic steps of salsa, why I was trying to do them very clumsy, although I had danced in my um, early 20s. But I really, really have to still smile when I look back at that picture. And he looked a little bit strange. I mean, I don't know if he was embarrassed. I would have been. But definitely me behaving like an idiot, being dressed like an idiot, and doing the steps like a little idiot. I mean, a charming idiot, but still an idiot. Um, yeah, he was not. But he was he was sweet. He was charming. And he tried his best. But I don't think it was one of his best memories. Anyway, one and a half years later, after that event with him, it was 10 p.m. Spring Salsa Congress in Amsterdam. From Germany, big applause for Janine and Flavio. I tremble uncontrollably, panic, I'm fainting, Margarita the Salsa song in the background. Smiling faces of people in the audience, me in a movie, so unreal. Final lift, pose, suddenly all the people in front of me jump from their chairs. My partner Flavio and I are completely in awe. We are smiling, we are crying out of joy. We had practice for this a whole year. They were cheering loudly, they were clapping. There was an enthusiastic host. She was rushing to us. She would embrace me, she cried. She said, I never thought she, you would be able to do this. And she gave me a big hug on stage. At that time, I'm still in pain. I'm absolutely in heaven and tears of joy are running down my cheek. You know, there is no such thing as perfection. And when you get that, it makes it so much more lively. I did have pain and I do still at times have pain and I have to take care a lot about myself and care for myself. But the joy that I'm feeling is so expanding, strong, and that is, it's, it's so deep that I would never say that my life is tough and hard. I really do believe and do feel and experience my life is deeply joyful and grateful. And it doesn't mean that my life is perfect. There are many thousand reasons to convince you how unperfect my life is. And there are many thousand reasons to say my life is a perfection in itself. I sometimes say before I go to bed, thank you, dear, wonderful joy that you never gave up on me and pulled me through all the obstacles, no matter what. And before I went to dancing, there was this, in this painful progress and process, when I was still in the beginning how to deal with the pain after the accident it was i think it must have two years afterwards after the accident happened i stood in portland my ex-husband former husband and i we had visit friends they just had a baby they were very much in joy tired but full of joy and i was not believing how from a talk host a successful one a a woman people would call beautiful or charming with a big mouth though in both ways the one who's going to conquer the one who's going to make it how that could happen that i was so down so broke so physically limited i couldn't even walk more than 10 minutes at a time and i remember i was alone i was in a quiet nature place nothing fancy, nothing glamorous, and nothing like taking your breath. Very normal place. And I remember that there was a nature around me. I don't know remember where my former husband was. My friends were at the hospital. They had an insecurity with a little baby girl. So I was by myself. And I did start to believe, I did start to, to, to pray to a higher power. You do this when you are devastated. People start praying when they're very devastated. I also prayed because I was very devastated. And I do remember that I prayed and I do remember that I was, I don't even know if I was furious. I was tired, I was exhausted of the pain and I did say, I don't wanna live anymore like this. I don't wanna live anymore like this. If I'm not going, to be able to move again. I always was 
athletic. I always was dancing in my teens. I don't want to continue to live. I'm only going to continue to live if I can move, if I can dance, and if I can do sports again. It was just very deep down. It was not something that's dramatically happening. It was just very quiet. I wasn't shouting. I think I had this inward, really intense talk. And I had a response. And I didn't have that, you know, angels appear and sing to you, and then God appears to you in all white, and Jesus talks to you. Gosh, I wish that. No, it was absolutely not happening that way. It was very neutral, like almost like a glimpse. And it was not like a voice would tell me directly. It was like a stream of calm, neutral thoughts that would say, yes, you can die if you want. And it was like a presence next to me. It was, I just remember it was like a presence. And I was not surprised. I was not disappointed. I I said, okay, because people would have told me, you know, if you die, you do this all over again. I mean, all over again. And that doesn't help if you're so devastated and in despair and in pain and physical pain. And I knew from the bottom of my heart, I don't have to go through this again. Whoever is there and knows me, observes me, has a grip on that, has a gentle hand in the back, believing in God or believing in the gentle force of the entelechy, that's the seed of becoming, as the Greek would say. It's a force that I knew that's absolutely understanding if I cannot continue. I just knew. So I didn't feel that guilt. I just felt like death was my friend, but I didn't feel like a suicidal. I, I felt like I cannot cope anymore with it. I just really, and I think that a lot of people who are taking their lives are not knowing how to cope. And that's becoming so strong that they don't find a way out. Now I had the same after I've done so much, spent all the tons of my money, seen healers and Oh, you see everything. You would just drink your pee. I don't know if I, I think I even drank my pee. You just do everything. I was exhausted by trying and fixing and not feeling a result. So I was in despair. Um, but I never felt suicidal or I never felt I had, I had a strong desire to feel joy and live. Even at that time. So when that silent, calm, present was, you know, streaming that in my mind or sending more. I, I thought those calm thoughts that definitely were not my use, use, usual thoughts, my normal thoughts. They were peaceful and calm and neutral, not overly enthusiastic, not overly loving. Very clear though. I felt a very deep down inside, a little flame, a flame that I remembered when I started ice dancing that was the deepest joy in my life and always felt like a seed has planted of joy in my system and my body. And that ice dancing was so amazing, important in my life and so full of joy that I still can feel the grip of my ice dance teacher and the speed we had on the ice in the morning before school started at 6 a.m. when it's really cold and you know, cold drops of ice are dripping down on the ice. Um, how do you say ice floor? I don't know how you say that. Sorry, you know by now I'm not a native. I'm very imperfect and um, in my language. But you, you can, it's like the drops of the ceiling are dripping down on, um, on the floor. And we were skating in all the mist and the, the, the coldness and the ice, but with loud music. Star Wars was very popular at that time. So we had the main title of Star Wars. I cannot sing and I don't even know how to sing it. But that's a picture. And in that picture, in that speed of skating backwards, my dance teacher pushing me and feeling fire coming up from my ice skates because we had such a speed. I'm such a speed junkie, I tell you. 
there was so much joy and I felt like this is a seed of joy that is unshakable planted into your system and comes to your remembering. And that joy was absolutely not strong there, but very minor, like be behind whales and whales and whales of shadow and, and layers of despair. I could feel this small flame of joy. And I think that was like, like a sign that was, don't give up, don't give up. And I was very clear, I will continue to live if I'm going to, to dance again. And it must have been, you know, a year later that then my dream came. And then it was a year later that I actually started dancing with a salsa teacher. And no cure had cured me so far, no healer. I had traveled the world. I've seen the biggest healer. I did portraits, interviews, no money, broke, with all the expenses for becoming healthy again. And then I was in Munich and I met, I, I took a private salsa dance, salsa lesson. And I was not particularly talented. I was in pain. He was very uninterested in me absolutely no joy in teaching me but he, boy he touched that that hit spark again and I fall back it took me you know one dancing lesson took me hours of recovery I took another dancing lesson hours of recovery and the day went by and the weeks went by it took me one hour it took me two hours. It took me three hours a day, seven days a week that I would train in the course of one year. And I was back to life and I was back on stage, on stage in quotes. I was back on the stage of life. And that doesn't mean that I wasn't in pain afterwards. It doesn't mean that in stressful situations, I'm not in a lot of pain. And as I said, never, 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 never let fear stop you. Never let fear diminish what you really want to do in your life. And even if you're always going to stay imperfect, and even if you never reach where you wanted to reach, but the moments in this process from A to B are the moments that count. And boy, did I have, I have great moments until here. And this is what I wish for you. Have a soulful rest of your day, wherever you are. Bye-bye.